the great thing that the Lord has done, the great thing the Lord is doing, and the great thing that he will do. Amen. Praise God. No one can hold on Jesus. Amen. Because he is the authority. He's our Savior. He's our King. He's our Lord. He is all to us. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for your goodness and for your mercy. Lord, I thank you for everything that you have done and everything that you do and everything that you'll do. Lord, we ask you, even I ask you this morning to forgive me where I feel you and where we I feel you. And help us, Lord, to do the things that you want us to do. And let the world hear who you are. Father, bless us today. Speak for me and for me. As I ask God in Jesus' name and for thy sake. Amen. And amen. Praise God. This morning we have come to the 49th verse of chapter 11 in the book of John. Our lesson this morning is all about John. But as we will look back, a quick look back, on John chapter 11, 45 to 47, spoke about the reaction of the people. It spoke about the reaction of the people when Jesus called out Lazarus from the grave. There was a great reaction, and the people did not like it. Some did not like it. While some was very happy of what happened, but some did not like what Jesus did when he resurrected, when he resurrected Lazarus from the grave, when he called him out. Suppose you have said, <laughs> that is another miracle. That man have just done. Suppose they have said this man seemed to be putting us in trouble. This man performing miracles upon miracles upon miracles. What is really going on? You know, we live in a world where people tend to love evil. They love evil. But when good show up itself, the people are angry because we are living in a wicked world. This morning we will look at John chapter 11 and verses 49. As verse 49 said, but a certain one of them, Gephas, who was a high priest that same year, said to them, you know nothing at all. You know nothing at all. No, in verse 50, no, do you take into account that it is expedient for you that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation should uh, not perish. That was Gephas' word, that high priest. But let me go down a little lower. <laughs> which is verse 51. And this speak of he, not of himself, but being a high priest that year, 
he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation. That Jesus should die for the nation. And not that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. Now according to what this high priest did or what he said the Bible said in 51 that he prophesied Now, if I would have someone to ask to answer that question, what is the other word for prophesying? Prophesy. When one prophesies, what is he doing? Or what Gephos was just done? Telling the future. Hmm? Telling the future. Okay. Ella Crick said, telling the future. Okay, because he said that, I have a question, another question to ask us. Was this man, was the first man that was telling that future of Jesus? Was he, Gephas was the first one that was telling the future of Jesus? Or if he was just repeating something that already happened or prophesied? The question may seem funny, what I ask. But the question I'm asking, uh. was Gephas the first one as a high priest prophesying that Jesus would die. We just talked about this. Or if he was just repeating something that was already said. Um, Go you, ahead. Oh, the scripture says that he was the high priest and he was prophesying. So I'm going to go with scripture. It says he was prophesying that basically he didn't even know that he was prophesying but the scripture said he was the high priest and that he was prophesying so I don't think he was saying what he heard someone else say I think it was the spirit speaking through him even though I, I don't believe he was a believer okay yes it's pastor I got you go ahead speak I believe that he was saying something that somebody else had said because John came uh, <laughs> oh Lord the Holy Spirit help me say this crying in the wilderness prepare ye the way of the Lord but that was before he said what he said what, what Caiaphas said Am I, if, yeah, yes. if yeah. I'm wrong, correct me, because I want to be correct. Go ahead. We, yeah, yeah. we got to tell it and tell it right. The Paphos, what's his name? Okay. Uh, what's the question you ask? What's the question you, what, what the, what the answer you, you made? What you said? Can you repeat yourself? What, what I'm saying is, John <laughs> was the first one. He's, you know, I believe Caiaphas, according to what I read in the word, is that John was the first one who said this. He just didn't, he, he didn't, maybe didn't say it the way he said it. But, and does it matter that, well, John was not, I don't know whether John was considered to be, he was not a high priest, is that right? Yes, he was. Oh, John was the high. John was a okay. prophet. He was a prophet. Okay. Well, he was that. Oh, well, see, he was in the same office 
as Caiaphas, but he said it before, and I believe this second person, Caiaphas, repeated what John had said. I think John was uh, in a higher office than him, than Caiaphas. Higher than anybody. Can a I prophet say? is a high office, uh -huh. very high office. Yes, but uh, uh, I don't. I don't think uh, Caiaphas was the first person to prophesy this by any stretch of the imagination. It's prophesied in the book of Genesis. We see the prophecy the first time: his, the serpent shall bruise your heel, but you'll bruise his head. That was the first prophecy about this event. Also, Caiaphas was the high priest. He was ordained as high priest, so. He wasn't the first person to say that Jesus would die for the nation, but in that specific moment, he was prophesying by the Spirit that he would die for the nation, but he was not the first person to say that by any stretch okay. of the imagination. Who, who argued with him? Hmm? Who argued with him? No, what I was going to say was, but Caiaphas wasn't even saying it for the good of the people, he was saying, we don't want them to take our nation away, right. so this dude got to die because he getting We're in the way the <laughs> of, of our thing. He's getting in the way of what we doing, and we don't want them to see this ruckus going on and them getting rid of Israel, the Romans, coming and taking away our whole nation, so he has to die. He didn't even, to, the scripture makes it seem like he didn't even realize that he was prophesying yeah. that Jesus would die for the whole nation. Thank you. Okay. Now, according to our reading, concerning that man Cephas, or that high priest, so to speak, we observe something was happening there. If we look at the previous verses, Sometimes we have to look back on the previous verses. Now, one can do two things. Or, according to the lesson and according to the world that we are living in, two things, or there are two forces, so to speak. Politics and religion. Or righteousness and unrighteousness. Good and evil. Right and wrong. As we look at that lesson here and what Kephos did, that remind me of a script I read many years ago. It's not in that lesson. But I said a script that I read many years ago concerning slavery. And that guy by the name of a place called Jim Stong. James Tong. James Tong. Tong. James Tong. James Tong. James Tong. James Tong. Jamestown. That's a script I read concerning slavery and concerning a man that came as a force to conquer slavery and to put them in subjection or to scatter them one from another. Or an answer to what the masses or the masters wanted. As we just read it, that's just pop up in my mind right now, concerning the book I read. Mm -hmm. What Kephos did, it was an answer to the people's problem. Because like Jesus was their problem. But what he have just prophesied, as the scripture said, according to what we read, I have a lot of verses to back that up. In fact, I brought just seven. Seven, where we're going to look at them. It's something that I already prophesied many years ago. 
in many different books, in many different places. And as Sister Rene said, that man did not even know what he was doing. The Lord allowed him to prophesy in that manner of something that was already said many years ago. Jesus was not an afterthought. But Jesus was the redeemer before the foundation of the world. He was the sacrifice before the foundation of the world. He was the one to deliver mankind before the foundation of the world. He was the, the man to redeem you and I and all those that even hate him before the foundation of the world. Now, our time is moving on very fast. And uh, I'm sorry I came late. <laughs> but uh, I just want us to look at, or probably I might just give you those verses. Because what Kephas did, and he said one man should die in order to set the people free that the entire nation would not be taken away from us. Yes, bro. And also it says that, and not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad, meaning the body of Christ. So not only did he die for that nation, <coughs> Sorry. but he died for us also. For the entire world and for Christians. Care for us did not concern about Christian. He didn't concern about God's people. But God made him speak in that manner. He spoke in that manner to say something. Now, because time have already there, if you have your pen and paper, you could take some words, some scripture verses that we will look up when you go home. Because I have a few verses right there that was prophesied and the most that I took is from Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 1 to verse 13 to 15. Isaiah 52, verses 13 to 15. You could just take that down and when you go home, we'll study that. Because I will not have time to explain that. Time is already on us already. And the next one is Isaiah chapter 53. Verse 1 to 9. The next one is Isaiah chapter 53. Verse 12. We can go down a little lower. Write them down so that we could, we could look them up. <laughs> The next one, you have the third one. The fourth one is Luke chapter 24, verses 44 to 46. 44 to 46, yeah. The other one, I'm moving too fast. Yeah. The, next, the other one is uh, Isaiah chapter... 53, verse 8 to 11. Wait a minute now. Isaiah 53, 12, Isaiah 24, 44 to 46. That's right. Okay, what? And that other one is Isaiah 53, 53. 8 to 11. We have two more. The next one is Romans. Romans 4, 24 and 25. And then the last one is John 19, 33, 33. John 19, 33 
to free fall. And I just read it, and I just moved on. So there are seven verses we got there that was prophesied long before Caiaphas prophesied what he did prophesy now. And verse 53, which is the last verse, and I'll stop there. So from that day on, they planned together to kill him. From the day Caiaphas said what he said, the people got the solution, and all they wanted to do was to kill Jesus. As I said, they wanted to kill him that he would shut up his mouth or stop performing miracle, or stop getting people saved. And we better be careful. We either, we either be ready or do ready. We cannot have one foot in and one foot out. Because any time we begin to try to get people saved, we should know the next thing. The wicked one will try to take us out. So that is the lesson for today. Father, we thank you. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for dying in our place. We thank you for coming and for laying down your life for the entire world. Help us to be always ready, Lord, because you're ready long ago. Hi, the scripture says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But God provided a way for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not die, but shall live forever. That means you don't have to go to hell. The scripture says if you believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, and if you confess with your mouth that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For by confessing with the mouth, you so are justified, and by believing with the heart, you are saved. So if you feel that tug in your spirit, that's God choosing you and giving you a chance to come to him. Just repeat after me this simple sinner's prayer. Dear God, I admit that I'm a sinner and I ask you to forgive me for my sins. I ask you to allow your son Jesus to come into my heart with, this, with your sweet Holy Spirit. I believe that he died for my sins and that he rose from the dead on the third day and is seated at your right hand. Amen. If you did that, you are in the family of God. Tell somebody about it. And also pray that he'll send you to a Bible-believing church. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.